In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate a process on how you can create this style of artwork in Adobe Illustrator. You may already be familiar with the Obama poster, which was used in the Obama 2008 campaign. But for this tutorial, I will be creating this John Lennon portrait in the same style. Be sure to download the PDF worksheet. Link is in the description. This contains all download links and instructions to help you follow along with this tutorial. So here I am in Adobe Illustrator, and this is a piece of artwork I created earlier. And if I pull up the reference image to compare, I hope you agree with me when I say I think this looks pretty close to the style. Now, though the technique I'm about to share with you is quite easy in principle, it is going to be a little hands-on and will require a little work from you. But trust me, this just makes it more fun, and hopefully you'll enjoy every step, and if you follow them well, you are going to end up with a great result. This technique actually offers you more flexibility than some other approaches, which will be far more rewarding because you're going to feel like you made this yourself instead of using the computer filters. Not only are you going to learn how to create this artwork, but you will be learning some useful Illustrator tools along the way. So, with all that said, let's get into it. So, this is a template I have set up earlier, and before we begin, I really insist you download this. This is going to help you create your own artwork very easily. All download links for the font and images are in the description. Remember, you're going to have to install the font first, as if you open the document before installing the font, it won't be the same. Now the font used in this tutorial is not 100% the same, but it is very close. So let's take a quick look at what we have here. Let me draw your attention to the Layers panel. If you cannot see this, you need to come up to Windows in the menu, click this, and select Layers from the drop-down menu. Now in the Layers panel, I have seven individual layers. So from the top, I have the Reference Image layer, and as you can see, this is currently set to Invisible. So let's toggle the visibility of the reference image layer, and there it is, also with a little colour swatch here on the top left to help us. Now, throughout this tutorial, I'm going to be referencing this image a lot in order to get the right style. So next, I have the text layer. This is ready for me to type in the title. Then I have the top blue layer, and currently this is a solid colour under my text here. Next we have the top red layer, and again this is a solid colour matching our reference image. Then we have the middle blue layer. I'll just toggle the visibility of the top red layer so we can see this. And as you can see, this is the same colour as the blue in the poster. Under this layer we have the lines texture. And if I zoom in here, we can get a closer look. Now, if I compare this to the reference image, you can see that these lines are pretty close to the original. And finally, our last layer, the base yellow. So that's the layers, and just to point out, they are carefully arranged in the correct hierarchy. So, we are all set to get the right effect. You may be wondering, why are they all solid blocks of colour? Well, you'll find out quite soon. So let's go ahead and make a start. Now I'm going to start from the top down. First I'm going to create the main image, then I'm going to work down around the detail. You'll see what I mean just in a second. So the first thing I need to do is prepare my face image. Now unfortunately we cannot do this easily in Adobe Illustrator, so we are going to have to come into Adobe Photoshop. So here I am in Adobe Photoshop and I have opened up the John Lennon image. And what I want to do is cut out the face to get rid of the background and tweak the contrast. First, I'm going to make the image grayscale. Then I'm going to use the pen tool to draw around the face and hair. I'm going to start by dropping points all around the outside of the head, like so. Once all the points are down, I'm going to add curves to the line. I can do this by pressing and holding on the pen tool and selecting the convert anchor point tool. Now I am going to go around my path and add curves to the line to get a much more smoother trace. To do this, I click and drag on the points to pull out anchor points, which I can tweak and add curvature to my line. So once I'm happy with my path, 
With the pen tool active, I will right click on the path and click make selection. Then I will see my path become a selection. Now I'm going to quickly come to the bottom of my layers panel and click the add layer mask icon. So now we have a nice cutout of the head. Next, I need to tweak the contrast. So again, I'm going to come to the bottom of my layers panel and this time click the add adjustment layer icon. I'm going to choose levels from the selection and with that, my adjustments layer panel should pop up and I can go ahead and tweak the levels like so. So you want to increase the contrast between the black and the white. What you should try to achieve at this stage is a good solid contrast between the hair and the eyes, but try and maintain as much detail as you can. Soon you will have something that looks like this. Now I'm going to save this as a PSD, should I want to come back later and do more adjustments. This is also included in the download folder. Right, so now I'm happy with the face, now I am ready to take this back into Adobe Illustrator. So here I am, back in Illustrator, and I have the template ready to use. I'm going to toggle the visibility of the reference image, so at this time I can focus on my work. Now I'm going to make sure I have my top blue layer selected in the Layers panel, and I'm going to come to File and Place. We need to locate the John Lennon PSD we just created and click Open. The image will now appear in my document. Great. Soon as this is in, I need to come to Object and click Rasterize. This will flatten our image and none of the Photoshop information will interfere with this going forward. OK, so now the fun starts. We need to transform this photo into a much more simple style. One to match the style of the poster. I'm going to start by applying a effect filter. So with the image selected, come to effect, scroll down to artistic and choose cutout. Now the effect window will pop up and this works exactly the same as it does in Adobe Photoshop. To the left, we have a preview window and to the right, we have a choice of effects and the properties to toggle the effect. So let's make sure we can get a good look at the image in the preview window and I'm going to start to toggle the cutout properties. So I'm going to go with number of levels as two. This will reduce the detailing slightly, as you can see. Then I'm going to toggle the edge simplicity to about five. This will make the image again look a little bit more simple. And for edge fidelity, I'm going to go with about one. So now in the preview window, our image is looking quite graphic and simple. Um, you might want to experiment with this. You might not necessarily go with the same values I used. So try and get something that looks a little bit the same as what I've got here. I'm going to press OK, and this will apply the cutout effect to my rastered image. So let's bring back our reference image. And now I can see this is looking more like the style in the poster. What you should keep in mind is that this cutout effect can be toggled again later if we see fit. And we can do this by opening up our appearance panel and clicking on the cutout effect. This will open up the effects properties window again and we can change these if we want to. Okay, so once you are happy with your effect, I'm then going to use the live trace tool. But first, I need to rasterize the image. So like earlier, with the image selected, come to Object and Rasterize. Now, you need to rasterize the image again because the cutout filter we applied before will interfere with future work processes. So make sure to rasterize it. But bear in mind, once you have rasterized, you will not be able to toggle the cutout filter again. So you have to make sure you're happy before you do this. So now I will press Live Trace, and then you will see the image has been broken down again into a more simple black and white image. At this point, I can toggle the minimum area and the threshold parameters up in the control panel to tweak the image further. So I'm going to push the min area to zero, and I'll change the threshold to about 100. Bear in mind, you may have to use different values depending on the image you use. 
Okay, so once I'm happy, I'm going to press expand. This is going to break the vectors apart and separate the white from the black. I do not need the white, so then I'm going to grab the magic wand tool in the menu and click off the image, and then click on the white space in the image, and this will select all the white. With this selected, it's a simple case of pressing delete, and what I will be left with is a vector shape of the detail part of the face in black. Perfect. Now, it's a simple case of dragging this into place on the poster, changing the size to fit the poster, and changing the color of the vector from black to the dark blue. I can do this by selecting my face vector, using the eye picker tool in the menu, and selecting my dark blue color from my swatch. Now, we have some vector shape coming off the end of the poster here. I can simply grab the direct selection tool, select the area and delete, and that'll do for now. Right then, so at this point, I'm going to compare my current style with the poster. If I look closely, I can see that my current effect is looking a little more, well, detailed and textured in comparison. For example, let's take a closer look at the jaw and the face shadows. I can see on the reference image, this is very smooth, and on mine, it's looking quite jaggedy. But, fear not, there is a really nifty way I can modify my vector to get a more simplistic style to match the original artwork. So let's zoom in and get a good view of what we are about to work on. Select the vector shape, come over to the menu and select the eraser tool. Now I am going to toggle the brush size down to something around this size and I'm going to start to draw along the edge of my vector like so. Now try and be careful to just use the tip of the eraser tool just to go over the outline and into the vector a little so as to not remove too much and try and get a smooth outcome. And upon release, I will see I have modified the edge of my shape and that is looking much more smooth. So again, let's try this. And that's looking nice and smooth. So let's compare. Yes, this is looking much better and a lot more similar to the reference image. Okay, so using this technique, I'm going to continue around the vector face, modifying parts I believe could be more simplistic in appearance. Also, along the way, I may want to remove some parts of detail to get a much more bolder outcome. For example, here on the hair section, I have a lot of blank patches. If I look on the reference image, there is not a lot of this, so I'm going to try to minimize this as much as I can. By selecting the direct selection tool, I can click on part of the vector line, and by pressing delete, I will delete part of the line, and if I press delete again, that whole section will be removed. So I will be using this technique quite a few times. Also, there may be times where you want to add some color back. For example, I want to join the jawline here up with this part. So make sure you have the same layer selected. Select the brush tool, choose the right color, and toggle the brush size, and draw across. And I may have to draw a few lines to get the appearance I want. Now, this will create a bunch of stroke lines, which is not part of the bigger vector. To keep this all neat and clean, I want to join these stroke lines together. First, I will select the brush strokes to, I just created using the selection tool. And to make this easy, I may want to lock the layers around this on the layers panel so I don't accidentally select them as well. So, with my stroke selected, I will come up to Object and select Expand Appearance. Now this will turn them into vector shapes. So with this new vector shape selected, I'm going to hold shift and select my main vector so I have them both selected. Then I'm going to use the Pathfinder panel and click Unite. This is the first icon to the left. That has now combined the two vectors into one. Perfect. Now keep that technique in mind as we will be using this a lot in future. 
So I'm going to continue around my face vector and use these techniques to modify the face until I get something I am happy with. This is the longest part of the process and may take a little while, but the more time I spend on this, the more it's going to look like the original image. So once I'm happy with the main face detail, I will move on and start working with the colour elements in the artwork. Now, we have already learned that the eraser tool is great for removing parts of a vector with a nice smooth result. So I am now going to use this same technique on the colour layers, starting with the top red layer. Let's take a quick look at the original example, and I can see the style here. The red seems to be concentrated to the right hand side, with a sort of outline around the left side, around the detailing of the eye and allowing blobs of blue through. So I'm going to try and achieve a similar effect on mine. So with the red vector layer selected, I'm going to select my eraser tool and increase the brush size and start to remove parts of the red block. First, I'm going to start with the left hand side. I'm not going to need any of this, so I'm going to remove this. I'm going to try to keep the original poster in sight so I can keep an eye on it as I attempt to get the same effect. Soon I will end up with something that looks like this. Not too bad. Now I have used the eraser tool quite a lot here, but what if you wish to add more detail? Well, you can do the same as earlier and use the brush tool. So next I'm going to focus on the middle blue layer and again use the same technique using the eraser tool. Be sure to keep looking at the reference image to get something similar. And that's looking okay. Next, I am going to bring in the lines texture. Now this time, I'm going to use a different technique. Now I could use the eraser tool like before, but it's going to be very difficult to bring parts of the lines back if I want to modify them later. So this time, I'm going to use an opacity mask and instead of deleting the vector, I'm going to mask it out. So to do this, I'm going to first select the lines layer and select the lines vector object. Then I'm going to bring up the transparency panel. Then I'm going to click on the top right menu icon and select make opacity mask. Now what you will see upon creating the opacity mask, the lines vector on the artwork will disappear and in the transparency panel, I should now see a black square icon appear to the right of my image thumbnail. Now, this opacity mask works just like it would in Adobe Photoshop. Whatever is black is hidden, and whatever is white is revealed. So we are going to use the white brush to draw onto our opacity mask to reveal the lines. Pretty simple. So I'm going to click this black thumbnail and I'm then going to come over to the menu and select the brush tool. Then I'm going to make the brush white. Now I'm going to draw on the opacity mask like so. You can see I am starting to reveal the lines texture. So I'm going to continue to draw around the face and bring back the lines texture where I see fit. And pretty soon you will end up with something that looks like this. And that's looking pretty cool. So that's the main process finished. At this point, I'm going to spend some time going around my artwork and smoothing some of the vectors off and adding more detail to enhance the artwork. Once I'm happy, I'm going to finish off the artwork by typing in my title. And that's it. So that's how you can create artwork similar to the Obama Hope poster in Adobe Illustrator. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. If you liked the tutorial, go ahead and click the like button on my Facebook fan page and even add me as a friend. If you wish to hear about more up and coming video tutorials and general creative news and updates, you can follow me on Twitter. And of course, check out and subscribe for free to tastytutes.com. Don't forget, you can download the documents you saw in this tutorial and take a cl closer look yourself. The links are in the description. Well, that's it for another video brought to you by tastytutes.com. Have fun guys and I'll see you next time.